Hello and welcome to the video of how to make a picture gallery in HTML5 using Tumult Hype. Now, before we get started here, let me go ahead and introduce to you the uh, or talk about the practice files. If you downloaded the practice files in the same location that you find this video or on the blog, you'll notice two different folders once you open this uh, folder here. One folder is images, which if you uh, take a look at those images, these are images that we're going to be using within Hype. So keep those in mind, that's what we're going to bring in, and you can see that, that they're different sizes, and that's okay because we can resize them inside of Hype as well. The next one is the practice files. Uh, now the practice files are um, the project that I created before where you can open it up and you can see how it was set up and you can also see the exported files if you double click on the index.html file you'll see exactly what we're going to be building so a thumbnail image where you can click on or tap on one of the images on the side and then one will scroll out and the other one will scroll in so this is exactly what we're going to be building inside of Hype. So, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first of all launch Hype by clicking on the Hype icon and uh, then rearrange my window here just to make sure I have it all fitting inside of my window. And once I have it how I want, I can go ahead and um, the, the, change the, the size of the HTML area, the stage area. To do that, you come over to the inspector. If you don't see the inspector, make sure you click on this blue icon over on the right hand side and that will pop open the inspector. Now the inspector has different small tabs up on top and we'll be using some of these tabs. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, change the document size to a different size. And you can see in Hype that we have different uh, sizes that we can choose from. Uh, you can see under the web category, small, medium, and large. Under the devices, uh, you can target iPhone, portraits, landscape, iPad, stuff like that. Under uh, displays, high definition, if you're trying to target high definition, and other things down at the bottom here. For now, we're just going to go ahead and target the iPad Safari widescreen. That will give us enough room to actually work with our uh, thumbnail or work with our uh, image here. So that's basically what we wanted to do to get started. I'm going to rearrange my timeline a little bit more, stretch it out a little bit more. And it's okay if I don't see everything here. I can cover it when needed and then uncover it as needed as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to be working with some visuals first and so I can move my timeline all the way down at the bottom. And <clears throat> we want to create a box or two different colors. We want to have a background for the thumbnail area and then a background for the actual image area that's going to be scrolling in. So in order to create a box that you can change the colors with, you come over to the top left hand side and click on insert images. And you have different things that you can insert, whether it be box, text, button, textured button, image, or video. Right now we're just going to be working with box. By selecting on box, it inserts this box inside of my stage area. Now I can grab that box and I can move it wherever I want. I can also grab one of the handlebars on the corners and I can stretch this out to whatever width and height that I want as well. So we're going to take this and move it over to the left hand side and we're going to make it <coughs> big enough to have our thumbnails on the side here so we're going to stretch it from the height from the top to the bottom and make sure it covers all of that but we're not going to go all the way across because we want enough room for our image on the right hand side and our thumbnails on the left hand side so we just want a little bit of space on the left hand side taken up by this box now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color of this box the way that you change the color and change the color on any aspect, whether it be text or anything like that, is within the inspector window. I still have my inspector window open, so I'm going to go ahead and select on that, but now I'm going to come to my element inspector. My element inspector is the fourth one over, and I can just select the element inspector, and then select the fill style to either be color, gradient, image, or none. Right now we're just going to stick with just a normal color. We'll change the gradients, we'll use the gradients in the stage area. But let's go ahead and select a light green color. <clears throat> this can be whatever color you want. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a light green since we're going to be bringing in roses to match the theme there. And the next thing we're going to do, that's pretty much all that we want for the, uh, for the thumbnail area. The next thing we're going to do is select insert elements and then click on box again. 
but this time we're going to actually add um, the background area for the rest of this stuff for the uh, images that are going to be scrolling in and scrolling out. So I'm going to take that box and I'm going to fill the rest of the screen here. Now I'm going to create this or change the color of this box into a gradient. I do that on the right hand side by clicking on the background and going down to gradient. If I select gradient, you'll notice that my box has now changed gradient colors. And in my inspector window, I have it going from blue to black. Well, I may not really want that, so I can select on the color and let's go ahead and change this to more of a white color on the very top. And I just exit that out and click on the color for the bottom and I can change this into kind of a light color for the bottom there. That really helps bring out the reflections which we'll be adding on to our image as well. So we have our background, we also have our uh, side area for our thumbnails. Well, a couple other things that you may want to do is you may want to remove the border for these boxes as well. You'll notice there's kind of a border separating between this box and the other box. If you don't want a border, you can come back into your element inspector and you can change the border to zero. And by doing that, now there's going to be no border on both of these boxes. You'll have to do it to each one of them. But now there's going to be no border. And I have to uh, rearrange this a little bit. It didn't quite fit after I removed the border. So let's just go ahead and make sure this all fits together. And now we're ready for our images. One last thing I need to do here. There we go. And now we can bring in some images by do, using the same function that we or using the same insert elements that we did for the box. You can insert your images. I'll select on insert elements and then I'll come down to image. Now it'll ask me to browse for my images and your images are found in the practice file so you can use your own images if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and select on the top one hold the shift button down and select on the bottom one. That way I don't have to do this for each image. I can bring all of them in at once. Now if I click on open, you'll notice that all my images kind of got stacked on each other. And also down in my timeline, I have rows four, rows three, rows two, and rows one. So all of these images are now their own timeline inside of the time or are their own layer inside of the timeline area. Well, these images, some of them are way too big to actually fit within that gray area. So what I'm going to do is move it over so I can see the gray area so I don't actually resize them to fit in the thumbnail quite yet. We'll do that in a second. But now I'm going to go through each of these images and I'm going to resize them. So I'll grab this big image so it's kind of out of the way and I'll just grab the corner uh, in the handlebar area. If you grab one of the corners, hold the shift button down and then click and then starts moving, it will actually resize that image. So let's take these images and let's start resizing them to make sure it fits within that area, which this one seems to fit okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that off the screen a little bit so I can see my other images. Now this image is a little bit smaller than the other one, so I may want to compare this or to uh, put this above another one and also hold the shift button, click and drag and make this a little bit bigger as well. Well, that one looks decent now, so I'm going to go ahead and just select that one and move it over to the side. And now I have this other image, which it seems to fit just fine here, so I'll go ahead and move that one to the side as well. And you'll notice on the side, I'm kind of stacking these so I can get to them quickly as well. And this one is a little bit small, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. So now they all match somewhat to the same size, not exactly, but at least close enough for now. And I'm going to take this and move it over to the side as well. Now, these images are going to start off screen and then they're going to come on screen. So I want to make sure that they're all the way off the screen here. If you need to close your inspector window, you can do that so you can see it a little bit more. And once you move it off the screen, that means that it's not visible. So when the learner or when the user is actually viewing this, they will not see those images until they scroll in. <coughs> So we have that set up, now we actually need to set up the thumbnails. So since all of them are selected now, what I'm going to do is actually just hit Control C or Command C on a Mac, and then Control V or Command V on a Mac. Which This is a Mac-based only application, so you would just hit Command C and then Command V. Okay, so we have these images, now we need to make them fit inside of the green area. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and just uh, resize them down so they fit, the width wise at least, they fit within the green area here. Move that down a little bit 
And you can see the blue line actually helps me organize this or arrange this and so I have it uh, aligned correctly. And I can do the same thing with my other images. So let's go ahead and just take that one down. I can move it over so it's aligned left and also middle of the uh, other image. And if I keep resizing it, you'll notice when I get all three of those lines for the middle, for the left, and for the right, that means I have it aligned perfectly with the image down at the bottom here. Okay, so we have that image. I'm going to go ahead and resize this one now. Move that one over. Move that one down a little bit more. And then the last image, I'll do the same thing. And move that one up a little bit more. I'm going to select all of them and move all of them down in the middle here. Let me go ahead and resize it a little bit more because we're going to add a stroke on here to make it look more of like a picture. There we go. Okay, so we have that laid out now. I'm going to add a couple different uh, elements to it in the element inspector to make it look more like actual pictures. And so we're going to add a stroke and we're going to add a drop shadow on each of these. And then on the big images, we're actually going to add a reflection. The thing that I love about Hype is that you can do this really easily. Um, and I haven't seen this in other HTML5 tools. And so I'm going to so I'm going to click on the inspector window to bring my inspector window back up. And then with my inspector, my element inspector tab selected, I'm actually going to come down to where it says border. Select on one of the objects, come down to border, and just let's go ahead and just uh, type in three here. So my border is going to be three pixels wide, and we're going to change the color to a white color instead. So it looks more like a picture frame. And so let's go ahead and I can select the each other ones here. I can select, shift select all of them, hit three, and then all of them, instead of doing it one by one, will all add on that border. And with them all selected still, I can change them all to white as well. That way you don't have to go one by one, one by one and do the exact same thing. I'm going to shift select the top one so all of them are selected still. And now I'm going to come over to the right hand side to the element inspector and I'm actually going to add on a shadow here. Now you add on a shadow, um, it already has a shadow, but there is no blur effect. So that means you can't really see the shadow until you start adding a blur effect. So if I type in three pixels here, you'll notice our images now have a slight shadow. Now I can offset that just by dragging the circle over where I want, but I kind of like the shadow to be around the entire thing. I want to add a little bit more, so let's go ahead and just change the blur to four, and so that uh, really makes the images pop out there. But because I added the border and the shadow, they're really not aligned with the green area still, so I'm going to move that over a little bit, and now they're aligned. Okay, so that's what we're going to do to the thumbnails. Now to the big images, we're going to do the same thing, but we're also going to add a reflection. So to do that, I'm going to shift select all of the images off the stage here, come over to the inspector element, and I'm going to add a border, but since they're big images, instead of just three, I'm actually going to make it so it's five pixels wide for the border, and change the stroke over to white as well, the color. And then we're going to come down to shadow and we're also going to add, let's say, five pixels for the shadow. But not just that, we're actually going to add a reflection. Now, you add a reflection just by grabbing the depth and start moving the depth. Um, now, once you've done that, come down to the right or to come down to where the images are and you'll notice that the reflections start to get added onto those images. If I want them to, uh, the reflections to be off a little bit more, I can adjust the offset. But for now, I think that looks good, so we're just going to leave it at that. Now we have our setup here. There's one last thing that we need to do is we need to add some instructions. So I'm going to come back over to Insert Elements, click on Text, and then I'm going to type in the text. And let's go ahead and just say click or tap the image on the left to view it's large in large mode. Let's just go ahead and type that. 
Now you can change the text font or if you wanted to make it bold um, by making sure that you first of all have your text selected. So I clicked off the screen here and then I just selected the text again. And now I can come over to the text tab and I can change the uh, font size, font type, I can make it bold, I can change the color, I can add a text shadow, text spacing, word spacing. So there's a lot of stuff that you would normally see in something like Photoshop here that you can use with your HTML5 animations as well. And so now that we have our text, I moved it to the top. Now we're ready to start animating these images in once we've actually clicked on this, um, this one of the thumbnails. In order to do that, we're not going to be using scenes. Normally to click to one thing to another, you would use something in Hype called scenes. But in this case, we're actually going to be using timelines. You can set up timelines in your inspector for this scene. And the reason why I like timelines is because you don't have to copy and paste everything over from one scene to the other scene. It's all there. It's just you're animating it different, differently depending on what's selected. So I'm going to come back into my scene inspector, which is the second tab in my inspector area. And I'm going to come down to where it says animation timelines. The first timeline is my main timeline. Well, I need to add a timeline for rows 1, for rows 2, for rows 3, and rows 4. So I need to have four additional timelines because something different is going to happen when each of those are actually selected. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus icon, double click in this area where it says untitled timeline, and I'm just going to name it rows 1 for the first one, and then do the same thing for rows 2, rows 3, and rows 4. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And the last one, which is rows four. Okay, so we have our timeline set up. But how do we start animating these timelines? Well, the first main timeline, nothing's really going to happen. This is what the person is going to see, the end user is going to see uh, when they first come to this interaction. Well, in this case, if I want to animate some text in, if I wanted to animate the thumbnails in, I can do that on the main timeline. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead, have it here, the text is already there, and then I'm going to animate it depending on what's selected. So, to switch timelines, I come down to my timeline area, and because I'm going to be working with my timelines, I may want to stretch it out a little bit so I can see all of the elements in my timeline. Well, I'm going to select the drop-down box or select the title where it says Main Timeline, and this is where I can actually select new uh, the timelines that I want to animate. Well, here's rows 1. And so with rows 1 selected, it really doesn't look that much different because I haven't animated anything. Well, I want the picture for rows 1 to scroll in when rows 1 is actually, when the timeline is played. So to do that, <clears throat> what I need to do is I need to come over to my timeline and to uh, view it a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the inspector there. And I'm going to click on the record button over on the right hand side. Now, in order to record something, what I need to do is move my playhead, which is this blue triangle with the line going down your timeline, I need to move it where I want something different to happen, or so this is the ending point of my animation, or a keyframe in my animation. So, <clears throat> this is where, by this time, which is one second, um, I want my image to actually already be in on stage. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my image on the left hand, on the right hand side, and then just hold down the shift button so I can have it uh, come across straight. And I'm going to select my image and move it over. By doing that, it added a keyframe at one second, but it also remembered where I started from. And so it has a keyframe at the very beginning. So if I take my playhead and I just move it back and forward, you'll notice that the timeline or the rows is actually animating in along the timeline. So everything is good there. Um, one other thing that I need to do with each timeline, I went ahead and I stopped recording. One other thing I need to do is I want everything else to actually be in the same location that it was before, at least all of my images on the right hand side. The reason why I want to do this is because if this rose gets selected and another rose is already on stage, I want that one to animate out. And it will if I set keyframes on the, on the first frame and at the one second mark. I don't have to animate those, but I at least need to set those keyframes. You set the keyframes over on the right hand side by selecting add keyframe. So I need to do that 
on the both the zero second mark so everything except for the rows that I'm actually animating in this case so I need to select the uh, three roses and you can hold the shift icon by doing this and then you can select the keyframe for all three of those roses and you'll notice that the one second mark those keyframes got added and now I need to move the playhead to the second the one second mark and then add another keyframe I know that sounds a little bit weird but that's basically telling hype that this is where on this timeline this is where these images need to be so if one of those images is out on the stage it needs to be back in this area so it's going to automatically animate that back for me and I don't have to add any code for it so I need to do the same thing for each timeline so we did it for rows one but now we need to select rows two and we need to do it for rows two so I'm going to select over here in this case I can use the record button and hitting the record button I can move down to the one second mark and the record button just allows me so I don't have to add a keyframe at the very first um, but now I'm going to hold the shift button down and then move these flowers onto the stage here and now I'm going to unselect where it has the record button and then use the uh, keyframe the manual keyframe to do the same thing I did last time for these images that are going to stay on the uh, right hand side there so I'm going to add one at the zero second mark and then I'm going to add one at the one second mark and so these on the timeline the only thing that's actually animating is rows two so let's do the same thing to rows three so move it over to the one second mark and then I'll go ahead and hit the record button grab my flowers over and animate those in unrecord that or stop recording that and then I can come over and select the other roses here and if I'm on the one second mark I can just go ahead and hit the manual keyframe there but just make sure you go to the zero second mark and do the same thing hit a, the manual keyframe there as well so one last rose that I need to do this at So move it over to the one second mark, hit record, and move that out to the middle as well. Okay, so select the other roses, hit the manual keyframe at the one second mark, and come over to the zero second mark, and hit the manual keyframe as well. So we have our animations all set up, everything is ready to go. However, if I hit the preview icon, which you can do that at the top right hand side, you'll notice when Safari actually launches, nothing happens. If I click on my, my thumbnails on the left hand side, nothing's happening here. That's because I actually haven't told those thumbnails what to do when they get clicked on. So I'm going to go ahead and exit that out. And now I'm going to, in order to tell a thumbnail or a button what to do, you actually have to set that up in the mouse inspector. Now, in order to set that up in the mouse inspector, I need to select what I want to, uh, to start adding something to uh, or telling this thumbnail what to do. Uh, I select it and then I come over to the inspector. And on the inspector, I need to come over to my mouse action inspector, which is the second to last one. So on the mouse inspector, I can actually see the different options here. I can change my mouse cursor if you're actually going to be using a mouse, but since we're kind of targeting tablets here, there's really not going to be a mouse. So you can either do on mouse click, there's really no mouse over, um, or you can do mouse up. Now for touch screen, if you really want to make sure that it's uh, um, compatible or targeted to touch screen, most of it happens when you're actually let go of the button. And so that would be on mouse up. If I select the drop down box here, you'll notice I have a jump to scene, which we're really not working with scenes here, we're only working with timelines. And I have a play timeline as the next option. If I select on play timeline, I now have my timeline uh, selection here, which I can select the drop down box. And here's the list of all of my timelines that I can jump right to when that button is clicked. Well, we're select we selected the rows one thumbnail, so we're gonna select the rows one timeline. Now coming over to the thumbnail on the uh, left hand side, I can now select rows two and I'm already on the mouse action inspector so I can just hit play timeline and let's say go to rows two. Do the same thing for rows three, select the thumbnail, go to play timeline and then select rows three. And then the last one, rows four, come over to the mouse up action, select play timeline and select the drop down box to rows four.
Well, that's it. We don't need any other code. We don't need to do anything like that. You could add more onto it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this inside of my project file. And I'll just call it practice. Hit return. And now I can preview it. Let's close the, uh, or close the inspector there. And then hit the preview icon. And now it pops up in it's Safari. And if I click on it, there it goes. That image scrolls in. But if I click on another image, that other image, even though I didn't tell it what to do because we added those keyframes, automatically scrolls out and the new one scrolls in. Now I can make these thumbnails smaller if I wanted to. I can also come back into my timeline. And if I double click on this uh, or expand out the rows here and I double click on this animation, I can also add easing in, easing out, so I can change the start time to duration. So there's a lot that you can do with it, but hopefully that at least shows you the capability that you can do to create a picture gallery, amongst other things, inside a Hype. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion or anything like that. But thank you for uh, listening to this tutorial.